So you guys may or may not know this, but you can change a regular desktop computer into a gaming computer in a few pretty simple steps. So let's get into these steps in this how-to video and show you guys how to get to gaming. Hell yeah. So I guess right off the bat, you'll need a desktop. If you have some, some old Dell HP desktop laying around, that's fine, it'll probably work for your cases. But uh, basically all you need is a regular desktop, Dell HP. Uh, full size desktops um, are usually better. Dell and HP and stuff like that, they also have like half size desktops. Those will work in some cases, but if you have a full size desktop, it'll work in pretty much every case. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna pull off the uh, side door on your desktop and then look on your motherboard to see if it has uh, the correct slot. I'll show you guys this slot in some B-roll footage. If you look on the motherboard, it may or may not be uh, actually printed on the motherboard depending on who made it, but it's a PCI Express X16 slot. And uh, if you ever have any more um, questions about what those look like, you can Google it. You can find it pretty easily. But uh, make sure your motherboard has that slot because pretty much all mother uh, modern graphics cards use that uh, type of connector to uh, plug into the motherboard. If you have that slot, then most likely your motherboard is perfectly fine for gaming and you can plug a graphics card in there without much uh, trouble at all. So once you make sure your motherboard does have that slot, you wanna pick out a graphics card. Um, right here I have a GTX 980, which is an Asus Strix card, uh, which I have unboxings on my channel if you're interested. But basically, you just have to find a graphics card. This is a very um, expensive graphics card at the making in this video. If you would buy this now, it'd be like $600 or more maybe. Um, so you don't necessarily need something this expensive. There's graphics cards that are in the $200 range and the $100 range, and it goes uh, down below that as well. Um, so just uh, pick something that's within your budget. There's NVIDIA graphics cards and AMD graphics cards. Um, both of them are pretty good. Most people like NVIDIA better, um, but AMD has some good strong points as well. Uh, if you ever have any questions about which graphics card you should get, just give me a comment uh, uh, in the comment section below, and I'll look at your budget and see if I can find anything that will uh, fit your budget pretty nicely. So once you pick out your graphics card, you wanna make sure your power supply has enough power to feed that graphics card, and I guess all the other components in your system. So basically, uh, most power supplies have a sticker along the side of them. I don't believe mine does because, uh, I don't know, I guess it's on the box so they just didn't feel like putting one on this power supply. But most, uh, sticker, uh, most power supplies will have a sticker. You can also see it online if you look up your power supply. And uh, most graphics cards, I would say, probably recommend at least 400. The really power hungry ones probably suggest five to 600 or even more. But if you have something that's like 400, you're probably gonna be fine. Just wanna make sure your graphics card is compatible with it. And by the way, if you're wondering if your graphics card is compatible with it, I have a link in the description below. It's an MSI forums link, and it'll give you all of the uh, recommended power and amperage uh, for each graphics card. So you wanna make sure that your power supply has the required uh, wattage and amperage to push that graphics card. So once you have that all figured out and your graphics card does have enough power from the power supply to uh, be able to run and everything, it's time to plug that son of a bitch in. <laughs> so basically, pull off the side door again, uh, I guess line up that slot, for, uh, press the graphics card firmly into that slot, and uh, you're pretty much ready to go. Make sure you don't put too much force, like if it's not like lining up right, make sure it's lining up because I mean, motherboards aren't fun to replace. Uh, so just make sure you just be gentle with it and uh, it should just line up right into place. Oh, and I guess I actually forgot something right before that. Um, the back of computers uh, on the PCI Express expansion slots, they will have uh, pieces of metal that sometimes are uh, replaceable, sometimes removable. Um, in your case, it might not even have it to be honest. But if it does have those PCI Express uh, expansion slot covers, you wanna make sure you take those off of course first because uh, you'll need to be using those display ports on the graphics card to run your new monitor. Well, I guess your monitor. So after you have the graphics card uh, pushed into place and everything, make sure you screw it up. That'll help to hold the graphics card up a little bit because some of them are really heavy and uh, it'll make sure it doesn't sag or fall out of the slot or anything like that. 
Once you do this, you might need to plug in supplementary, supplementary power to your graphics card. Uh, my GTX 980 in particular has an 8-pin and a 6-pin. If you have a lower-powered graphics card that's also cheaper, uh, you might have just a 6-pin, you might have just an 8-pin, might have two 6-pins, or you might not have any supplementary power at all. That's perfectly possible and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but just make sure you have all those adapters coming from your power supply. Most likely, if your power supply is like 400 watts in particular, you'll probably have a couple of these six pins. Um, if you have a more, power, uh, more powerful power supply, then you'll have probably some eight pins as well. Just make sure you have all those eight pins that you require on your graphics card. Um, and if you don't, then you can get adapters on Amazon that, you know, uh, can give you some six pins or eight pins. Or uh, you can also just upgrade your power supply, which is probably a good idea. Because most likely, honestly, power supplies that come with Dells and HPs and other pre-made computers are usually pretty weak. They try to uh, cut corners in that area. All right, so at this point, your graphics card is all the way plugged in. You have the supplementary power plugged in. Uh, I guess at this point, it's probably time to uh, plug your displays in. Uh, you might have HDMI, you might have VGA, you might have DVI, you might even have DisplayPort. Uh, if you uh, if you don't have like for instance if you have like a VGA monitor a lot of graphics cards these days don't have VGA and in that case you'll need to get an adapter off Amazon or Newegg or something they really aren't too expensive but uh, just check out Amazon do like VGA to DVI or VGA to HDMI there's plenty of adapters online so if you have any questions leave a comment uh, in the comment section and I'll try to help you out as well. So once you have your display plugged into the ports on your graphics card, because you'll be using those now instead of the ports on your motherboard, uh, you're pretty much almost ready to go. At this point, it's time to uninstall your old graphics card drivers and install your new ones. So if you're unfamiliar, to uninstall programs, go to Control Panel and then uninstall a program. I think it's called that or something. And then you just need to find your graphics card drivers. Most likely, it'll be either AMD Intel or Nvidia and you just need to uninstall those drivers once you do that the screen will probably look really bad um, That's because there are no drivers and the drivers really make the screen look better So uh, after you uninstall these graphics drivers, you might have to restart your computer after you do that open up Internet Explorer Chrome any other internet browser go to uh, the website of your graphics card manufacturer, which will either be AMD.com for AMD graphics cards or NVIDIA.com for NVIDIA gra uh, drive graphics drivers. At this point, just go to the, graf uh, to the drivers section. Uh, for NVIDIA, it's probably gonna be the GeForce drivers. For AMD, um, I don't think they have really too much specifications on that, so just look up your graphics card and, uh, or you can also do the auto find graphics card, um, which is available on both of them, I think. So you can do either of that and then just download those drivers, install them, and you're pretty much ready to go, which you'll probably have to restart your computer afterwards, but at that point, you're pretty much ready to go as well. So make sure everything's running. If, every, if anything just seems odd, um, I guess, uh, give me, a, give me a, a question in the comments section. I'm always ready to help you guys out down there. Um, like for instance, a lot of new graphics cards like this Asus card, the fans do not spin whenever it's not under load. So if you see the graphics card fans not spinning, that doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you have any qu uh, comments or concerns or anything, uh, just let me know in the comment section. I'll be happy to help you guys out. All right, so at this point, you're pretty much ready to, you know, start up some games, download Valve, or I guess Steam from Valve, uh, download Origin, which really isn't that good, or just download any other games that you want to play, like GTA 5, Call of Duty, uh, Witcher 3, I guess, just came out, stuff like that. Uh, but at this point, I'm going to tell you guys about Cutting Edge Gamer, which is how I get my graphics cards. And if you guys are interested in paying uh, lower monthly fees for graphics cards instead of paying all at once, then you might be interested with Cutting Edge Gamer. It's personally what I use. I really love it. Like this graphics card I've been showing in this video, this Asus Strix GTX 980, it's an expensive graphics card. And technically, I could afford it, but it's really expensive to pay all at once, like 600 bucks pretty crazy to drop all at once. So with Cutting Edge Gamer, you would pay like $60 for a graphics card like this, which a lot, which is a lot more affordable for me. I mean, you might like Cutting Edge Gamer. It's, uh, it's a pretty cool little program. 
Also, if your graphics card ever breaks, Cutting Edge Gamer will send you a new one right away, which is pretty great. You don't have to deal with crappy ass RMA uh, service and everything. Um, and also, at the end of your lease, you can pay the last 13th month. Once you pay that 13th payment, you'll get the graphics card to completely own. I mean, it's your graphics card at that point, which is unlike most other leasing programs, which usually you have to give the product back afterwards. So, uh, Cutting Edge Gamer is a really good deal in my opinion. I use it a lot. And I think you guys will like it as well. So if you are interested, check it out in the comment section below. If you are interested, you know, just don't check it out. And uh, we'll just move on. But anyway, just thank you guys for checking out this how-to video. Once again, any questions, leave them in the comment section. Drop a like on this video if you thought it was helpful or enjoyable or anything else. And uh, by the way, if you guys are interested, just uh, some background info. This is the second time I've made this how-to video. I just wanted to make it a little bit better this time. So I hope you guys uh, appreciate it being better. Um, and if you have any uh, comments, if this video wasn't better, I guess, tell me in the comment section. But I'll see you guys later. Have a great motherfucking day. Peace out.